Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Claire, this is the farmyard garden. That thing there, well, I've been putting it off for a long time. I need to get the brassica cage back in place. This is his home for 2024 on the new plot. And I need to get the brassicas out. Excuse the attire, I'm just comfortable for lots of planting. This cover, temporary cover, needs removing. The bed needs weeding. This needs putting up and fixing in place need some support. I can tie it to the sweet pea frame on this side, but I need to put some support in this side. Well, I say I, we both know that means Duncan's coming to do that. So let's get cracking. I haven't done a thing with this bed since I put these out. So it's gonna need weeding, I would have thought. I'm saying I would have thought, I can see the weeds in it. You probably can't from there. Right, I'll leave them there. I don't know where I'm going to put this. Um, I'll worry about that later. As you can see, the weeds aren't actually too bad. Which I find really pleasing considering eight and a half months ago, this site was still a paddock. And yes, I did do no dig to start the beds off. I'm not really a no-dig person. If I feel like a bed needs digging, I'm going to dig it. But to start the initial beds, it seemed a good idea. So this bed didn't have manure in it because I knew that brassicas were going to go in it. So this bed had a lot of old leaves at the bottom of it on top of the cardboard and then the compost on top. I'll just loosen the soil around some of these weeds green hoop that I'm going to use over here I did have on my brassica bed last year bought it quickly from Amazon it was just a temporary idea because we were going to build a permanent structure but you know what it weathered all of the storms last year I loved how easy it was to have the zip to get in and out of it so I thought why am I going to build something when that still works because it's just going to end up stuck in a cupboard or a shed and not get used again so I thought until it breaks I'm going to try and use it again this year I purposely chose to put the brassica bed here because I was hoping that there'll be a bit of shade from the fruit cage. Because this whole plot faces south that way, it just felt like this would give it a little bit of protection to stop them bolting over summer. When I finish doing the bed, I will put some strulch around the brassicas. I did that last year on the old bed Again, simply because it was a brand new bed that we made and I, it was so weedy before we did it that I thought that all the weeds would come back. And strolls work brilliantly for weed suppressant on there. I do have brassica collars that I need to put around, so I won't put the strolch up to the brassica collars. I'll leave it at that point just so as it gives these room to breathe a bit as well. But hopefully that will work in here again this year. And then if it gets raked in over winter, it's going to give a good sort of dressing into the soil as well. The biggest challenge I'm going to have is trying to get this on there without damaging the brassicas that are already in there. Now, I have instructed the sweet peas to grow the other side of the trellis. The hoop does come with holes at the ground level as well in a few places that you can peg it in to secure it. So I'll just put a couple in this side and now we wait for Duncan. I've got my helper. I think he's going to have to go outside, isn't it? I think we've made it the bed too small. Now I've seen it fully. You pull it out fully, it's too big. We didn't make the bed the right size. Change of plan. It won't take long. Let me just, oh, I don't know how that goes outside though, because there's a supporting thing in the middle. Got a new packet of ground pegs.
Now we'll do all the centre supports. I'll go and get some string. There we go, a crude spike to help it go in the ground. Right, threading that underneath there. I think so, yeah. Now, hopefully, if I just fasten this edge on in a minute around the sweet pea frame, I should be able to pull it a bit tauter across the ridge. Now one of the last things I will do is get some excess wood chip from around the plot. I have got more wood chip but I'll do that another day but I'll just take some from where it's a bit deeper on the plot and just cover these edges over mainly to stop things getting up underneath them like those pesky butterflies who like to find their way everywhere. So now I just need to choose which brassicas I'm going to be putting in here. I've sown far too many. I'm going to have to have a bit of a pick and choose between them and then I'll have quite a few that I can give away on local Facebook pages. Decisions, decisions. Let's go and have a look. It's going to feature broccoli heavily and kale because I am utterly addicted to both. Hmm. Wow. What have we got here? These are some kaylets, and I actually don't think that's going to be tall enough for them. Pretty certain they'll need more height than that cage, so I might leave them and have to think of something else for those. I'm not sure. I might have to have a Google actually, see how tall they grow. Put those down. What have we got here? These are some graffiti cauliflower and snowball cauliflower. They were sown a bit ago and actually, actually they were sown in February and that's all they've done. So hopefully getting in the ground will do them a favor. And then I have some curly red kale here. Now I've never had red curly kale before. And by that, I mean, I've never bought it to eat, never mind to grow. So this will be quite exciting, something different, but I do love traditional kale, be it curly kale or otherwise. These are my Calabos red cabbage, apparently. Not looking very red though, are they? So I'm assuming they get redder as they get older. Who knows? But anyway, if that's what they're supposed to be. That is what I sowed. So hopefully it's not just a mislabel, but that is what they're supposed to be. Which then obviously leads me on to that. I have two trays of the tender stem broccoli. Now these are what I'm doing in a grow along with Eli. And actually, I'm just thinking, I don't know whether Eli's planted hers out yet. Fortunately, with the power of the internet and a little bit of editing wizardry, we can actually find out exactly how Eli's getting on with hers. So let's bring her into this video right now. Hello Eli, how are you doing? I hope you and Kate are well, and I hope the weather is being kind to you up there. Man, the weather's been mental here. It was beautiful, sunny, gorgeous for like about a week. And then yesterday the heavens opened with a week's worth of rain yesterday afternoon and then howling winds overnight. Wow, Eli, that sounds a bit of a challenge for any gardener. Um, yeah, so how are yours doing? I think they're doing okay, actually. I'm just looking at them on the hanging shelf in the polytunnel. You haven't planted them out yet. Are you mad? Um, maybe. I think mine's have been out for about maybe four weeks even. Um, can tell you don't watch my videos then. Yeah, right, so I'll show you them then just so you can see because they're quite a bit further on than yours. Yeah, right, they're in the green stock. So, uh, I've got them planted in my green stock, which is basically a big vertical planter system. Um, it's quite fancy pants, it's got like an internal watering system and stuff, but it's a big vertical planter. 
I've got them planted in the bottom because I am expecting them to get maybe about that tall. Um, so that way they've got quite a bit of space and they're not going to be too floppy near the top or anything like that. But they're doing really, really well, as you can see. Yeah, definitely a bit bigger than mine. How are you going to deal with cabbage whites? Because obviously mine are going to be in a tunnel, protected from them, covered, and yours aren't there in the green stalk. I'm just keeping an eye on things, keeping checking it underneath the leaves, looking for any eggs that might be on there. Because if you leave them, you'll get caterpillars and they will munch the lot. That is an extra challenge for you, but definitely worth it to be able to have the room to grow those tender stem broccoli, because obviously I know that you don't have room in your raised beds for them like I do. Yeah, I'm really chuffed. They're doing well. Quite excited about this. I'm really glad you're excited. It was one of the best crops I had last year. Granted, I didn't grow much last year because I didn't have this big plot then, but yeah, so excited that you're excited as well. But I can't believe you haven't planted yours yet, mate. You're cutting it fine. It's not much of a grow along if you're not actually growing them, is it? I know, I've been pretty useless. I've been so distracted planting other things that I completely forgot the brassicas. Is that enough of a wee bit of inspiration to get you out there and get them planted? Yes, yes, I'm definitely gonna go and do it now. I can't believe you've left them in the cell trees this long. Enough of your messing about making things pretty in your polytunnel. Get out and get planting. <laughs> okay, I need to go because I've actually got to go and start work. But I'll tell Kate you were asking about her and good luck and make sure you give me an update soon. See you, you. Thanks, Eli. It was lovely to catch up with you. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. I think I need to maximise this one. I need to get them all out, don't I? It's a bit of a healthy competition. Which one of us gets to harvest them first? I don't think it's going to be me. Come on. Let's get it done. There's only eight plants here and they don't grow very big at all. So I'm going to try and squeeze all eight plants in. We'll have to give them a quick looking over just to make sure there's no eggs or anything on them already before I plant them in there. I will just go and get some lime to put in the hole when I plant them. Now I don't have a problem with club root as far as I know, but obviously, as I've said before, this is my first growing season. This is a new bed. In theory, it shouldn't have club root in it, but it's not going to hurt me to give them a little bit of lime and hopefully they should be okay. I've got to hurry on my trowel, my two trusty implements. I just roll this up so I don't trip on it. I'm going in. I think I'm going to plant these up that side. just put my gloves on. The good thing about this tender stem broccoli is how compact the plants are. I grew them last year and I didn't need to grow them as far apart as I did. I expected them to get as big as other sprouting type broccoli and they really didn't. So I'll be able to cram them down this side of the tunnel and I'm not going to have any problems with them whatsoever. They're going to be fine there. And it's part of the reason why Eli has come to be growing them now. And I'll link her video at the end of this video so that you can see the story for yourself if you want to know what went on. There's four in each one. Look at the roots on that. Yeah, they needed to get out, didn't they? I'm not going to put them too close to the edges because of the leaves and the butterflies. But I'm going to cram four in on a row. So I'll just get a couple of holes dug. Bit of lime in. Fish blood and bone. Mix that in a little bit. Plonk him in. Brassicas do like to be firmly planted. So hopefully they'll be happy there. Mix it in a little bit. Plonk him in. Again, it's another one with a lot of root growth. What I'm doing here is putting the cabbage collars around each of these tender stem broccoli plants. I'll do this for all of my brassicas. It protects against cabbage root fly. 
they have no problem growing with them in place. It sort of expands as the stems of these plants get chunkier as they mature. Well, that's those sorted. I will go ahead and plant up the rest of this bed and I'll give you a look over it afterwards and let you see how it looks. Last thing I'm going to do is take a couple of these old, I assume they're travertine tiles. They must have been expensive kitchen tiles at one point and just give myself a little standing area when I go in. Right, pleased with that. I've got seven tender stem broccoli, four curly kales, six cabbages, then there's a summer purple sprouting broccoli at the back. I have some snowball and graffiti cauliflower, not a huge cauliflower fan. And then there's also a couple of sprout plants that my sister gave me from the local garden centre when she bought some starts, which look a bit better than my Brussels sprout plants here. So I might as well keep hers in there. I'm just going to give them a good watering. But hopefully that's Brassica Central for summer. And then in another month or two, when the onions have come out, I think I might actually put some more brassicas in one of those beds, spread it out a little bit. So there should be plenty for the winter. Red cabbage I need to get. I'm not entirely certain that I believe they're going to be red cabbage anyway, shape or form, but they were bought as calabos red cabbage seeds. We shall see, but I'll definitely buy some different red cabbage and probably have a bed full of that for Duncan and Isabel. They absolutely love pickled cabbage. You can water straight through this thing which is quite handy as well. It kept out all of the butterflies last year. Towards the end of the year, we did get a little bit of white fly in here. It's not fine mesh, but it did the job. I'm really quite happy now. This brassica tunnel has been something I've been visualizing since I was designing the entire plot last year, less than nine months ago. This space was a paddock that cows were grazing in. And now it's my vegetable garden blows my mind. If you want to watch the collab video with Eli from Eli and Kate, you can watch that here. And then this video here is one that YouTube thinks you might like to watch. I'll catch you next time. Bye.